Hello, in this lesson we're going to talk about Cartesian vectors or algebraic. We place these vectors on the Cartesian system as we all know it uh, with the x and y axis, the axis that you see uh, sketched right in front of you. Let's actually see how we can uh, express a vector in an algebraic manner. Consider this vector. We have the tail of the vector m and the uh, tip n. Uh, we can even denote it with just with a small letter u for simplicity. Well, you see, I just placed it on this uh, Cartesian system. But like I said in the previous chapter, we can take any vector and translate it for our convenience. So I'm going to take this vector m and and place the start point in the origin just to make our job a lot easier. A vector such as this, starting at the origin and ending at any point on the Cartesian system, let's call the position vector. This is the position vector associated to our uh, original vector mn. So now this position vector only has coordinates of interest of this point p, the end point, because the origin we all know is 0, 0. The notation for this point is very familiar to you. A represents how far is this point from the origin on the x-axis and B is the y-coordinate or how far is this point from the origin on the y-axis. Now this is how we denote in an algebraic form a vector. So that u-vector is going to be, and I'm using square brackets and exactly the same coordinates like before, A and B. There might be other notations uh, preferred by other people, but this is a very common notation for vectors, square brackets. For our vector now, A represents the coordinates of the endpoint as well. But we know this is the vector that starts at the origin and ends at these coordinate points. Now, let me introduce a new concept that you're going to find very useful to describe vectors. So let's see what the unit vectors are. The unit vector is that vector that has a magnitude of 1 and has the same direction as one of the axes of the system. So this first unit vector that I'm describing here is the I'm going to call i. It starts at the origin, has a magnitude of 1 and has the direction of x-axis. And of course we're going to have another vector. We're going to call this one j. And this has a magnitude of 1, the same like before, starts at 0, ends at 1, going in the same direction as y-axis. So if we want to describe these vectors i and j in an algebraic format just like before, we're going to say i is 1 and 0. It only has values on x-axis and nothing on the y-axis. While j is the unit vector that has uh, can be described in an algebraic format such as 0 and 1 because it has a magnitude of 1 but the direction is along y-axis. That's why x-coordinate has 0 and uh, the y-coordinate has that 1, the unit. These unit vectors are very useful because we can use them to describe algebraic vectors. And let's see how. For any Cartesian vector u, as we said before, denoted with a and b in square brackets, we can write it as a sum of its vertical and horizontal components. And what are these components? A and 0, this being your horizontal component, plus the vertical component is that component that has all the y values and no x value. So plus 0 and b. Because I'm going to add a plus 0, 0 plus b, I have the same like before. And these are your horizontal and vertical component. Another form that I can write this uh, vector is by factoring these values because a can be any number, right? Same as b can be any number. So I can write as a times 1 and 0 plus b times 0 and 1. So I have the same like before, only that I factor out these scalars a and b. And now, since we already know what unit vectors are, you recognize that 1 and 0 is the unit vector on the x-axis 0 and 1 is the unit vector on y-axis. So why not describe it using the unit vectors in the following format a i plus b j. And this is another form for describing algebraic vectors. 
one more thing if you look on the graph the magnitude of this vector is the hypotenuse and this right triangle which has the sides of length a and b applying the Pythagorean theorem I can say that the length of this vector the magnitude I'm gonna use the right notation for the magnitude is square root of a square plus b square because these are the sides of that right triangle in which the hypotenuse is the magnitude of u. So that's how you calculate the magnitude of an algebraic vector. Now let's go further. In the previous chapter we dedicated an entire section to the addition and uh, subtraction of vectors. Let's see if we can do the same thing now a little faster. So if we have two vectors, u described by u1 and u2, it's x and y coordinates of the endpoint, right? And v is v1, v2, and we have a scalar k, which is a real number, then u plus v is going to be equal to u1 plus v1, u2 plus v2. Let's see how exactly can we come up with that conclusion. So let's take the sum of u plus v and take it step by step. So u is going to be u1, u2 plus v, which is v1, v2. I'm going to decompose each vector in its uh, horizontal and vertical components. u1 times 1, 0 plus u2 times 0, 1. The same for the v vector. So v1 times 1, 0 plus v2 times 0, 1. You notice how 1, 0, it's a common factor for two terms, while 0, 1 is a common factor for the other two terms. So let's continue and factor this out. What I'm going to be left with is u1 plus v1 times 1, 0, plus the other two are u2 and v2. So u2 plus v2 times 0 and 1. What do you recognize? So first is the x component, second is the y component or the vertical component. So the vector is going to be u1 v1, u2 v2. That's exactly what we said in the formula. Now let's see if we have subtraction of two vectors. u minus v is going to be u1 minus v1 and the y component is u2 minus v2. And once again I'm going to prove it. So let's express this difference u minus v is going to be and use the algebraic notation just like before. So it's going to be u1 u2 minus v1 v2. This time I'm going to use the unit vectors. So instead of u1, u2, I'm going to write u1i plus u2j and the same for the v vector and I'm going to write it in parentheses so I can keep the same sign in there. So minus v1i plus v2j. Again, I find a common factor of i and a common factor for two terms is j. So I'm going to factor i and j and what I'm being left with is u1 minus v1 times i plus u2 minus v2 times j. And once again, I recognize this is the, the way you can describe a vector. So this is the resultant of the difference of two vectors. Going good so far. Now, what happens if we have a vector multiplied by a scalar? Well, k times v equals to k times v1 k times v2. So each component, horizontal and vertical components, are both multiplied by this scalar. And uh, we can prove this just like before. I'm going to say kv and express v as v1 and v2 in an algebraic format. Or I can actually go farther just like before using the i and j, the unit vectors, to express this vector v. Now you can recognize how this is just simple algebra. So it's going to be kv1i plus kv2j. And once again, this is going to give you the vector kv1, kv2. Just like I said in the formula. Now, for a position vector, it should always be very clear and very easy to calculate. But what happens if I have a vector that doesn't start at the origin and doesn't end at the origin either? Let's have a look at that. So. On the Cartesian system, if we have a vector, as you can see, between P1 and P2, right? I have a vector. Well, I have already constructed the position vector from origin to P2, and um, I also constructed this other vector, P1, 
to the origin, P1 is O. P1 has the coordinates x1 and y1 and P2 of coordinates x2 and y2. The vector P1, P2 can be expressed in an algebraic format such as this, x2 minus x1, y2 minus y1. The x component is the difference between the coordinates from the end point to the start point and uh, the same for the vertical component the y coordinate of the end point minus the y coordinate of the start point let's see how we can uh, demonstrate such thing from the beginning I constructed these two other vectors for which p1 p2 is the resultant vector so let me just use the knowledge that I have from geometric vectors the triangle method for addition of uh, two vectors to express this vector p1 p2 so I'm gonna say p1 p2 equals to p1 o plus o p2 this is based on the triangle method from the geometric vectors now I try to make the connection with this chapter I know that the position vector o p2 it's exactly what I'm looking for I know how to express this in, in an algebraic format but p1 0 it's kind of the opposite of a position vector right but it's exactly what I needed well let's express this p1 0 as a position vector so I'm gonna continue by keeping this op2 as it was plus I'm gonna use a position vector so it has to start at the origin in other words op1 negative op1 as we know is the same as p1 o so basically it's op2 minus op1 that's what this expression ends up being now instead of op2 let's actually use the algebraic vector this vector op2 it's a position vector so it's gonna be x2 y2 and op1 again it's simple that's gonna be minus x1 y1 so it's gonna be x2 minus x1 y2 minus y1 I told you from the beginning that's how you express a vector p1 p2 right let's see how we express the magnitude of this vector so just like before but using its coordinates the magnitude of p1 p2 is going to be equal to square root of x2 minus x1 square plus y2 minus y1 square and uh, just before we close this uh, lesson one more thing that you may encounter is vectors that are expressed in a geometric format just like before so you know the length of the vector and you know a reference so if you have this vector v you are given the angle that this vector forms with the horizontal for example with the x-axis you have theta well I can use its vertical and horizontal components in order to express this geometric vector and we know how to resolve any vector in its rectangular components from the last lesson of the previous chapter so we know that on the x-axis this component is going to be the magnitude of V times cosine of theta the rectangular component on the y-axis for, for this vector is going to be magnitude of V times sine of theta so I can express this geometric vector V in an algebraic form as follows magnitude of V cos theta and the vertical component is magnitude of V sine theta first of all this is how you express vectors in an algebraic format and also you've seen how uh, to connect geometric vectors with algebraic vectors so you should be able to work now in uh, either format and switch between them very easily I'm going to conclude the lesson here. Thanks for watching.